Hey guys, so the miracle I'm going to speak about today and the reason why I'm inside a church and right behind me is the holy altar is because of a miracle that took place in Jerusalem at the holy tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. This miracle here was mentioned also from a monarchy, Porfiria, in one of her books that she wrote. Just before I start though, I just want to say that right below this video, I have provided a charity update. We have completed six churches and now we're up to church number seven of St. Constantine and St. Helen. For anyone that might be interested, I know times are hard, but the link will be below in the description if anyone wishes to donate. So to start on the miracle, there was a guy by the name of Nicholas that worked with the Greek embassy in Jerusalem and his family lived in Cyprus. And what he did was he would basically travel back and forth from Cyprus to Jerusalem. His sister-in-law could not have a kid. She had gone to doctors in Greece, in Cyprus, uh, in the UK, but unfortunately, they had told her that it was impossible for her to have a kid. She reached the age of 40, and after countless prayers, it was the will of God, he allowed it, and she finally fell pregnant. So when she fell pregnant, the whole family was so happy. You could just imagine. So eventually, she gave birth to her child. But the next day came the sad news. The doctor informed his sister-in-law that the baby was born with one kidney. And that kidney, only half of it was operating. The other half was damaged. And therefore, the baby needed hemodialysis, which is hemodialysis. So you can understand how this news came with great sadness to the family. Unfortunately, going from doctor to doctor, there was nothing that they could do. Now, when the baby reached two years of age, the sister-in-law had a dream that she did not disclose. And she told Nicholas that she wanted to go to the holy tomb in Jerusalem with her baby. She flew over from Cyprus um, and what Nicholas did is he organized a tour guide to take his sister-in-law with a baby to the holy tomb of Christ. Once they entered the church, the baby was crying and another lady that was there asked, why is the baby crying? And the sister-in-law answered, because it is sick. The lady then said, put your child on the holy tomb and it will stop crying. So the sister-in-law took the crying baby and laid it on the tomb of Christ. But not only didn't it stop crying, its tears intensified. She says that she stood there and she was marveled. She could not take a step forward or a step back. She says that the baby started to bruise up and she managed after a while to basically take a step, a few steps and grab her baby into her arms. Now, because the baby could not breathe, they took it straight away to hospital and placed it on oxygen. Eventually, the sister-in-law has returned back to Cyprus to the baby because it was due for another appointment of hemodialysis. So Nicholas says, and this is so beautiful, that he had met an ascetic monk in Jerusalem. And after his sister-in-law had left to go back to Cyprus, he basically went to visit him. Now this ascetic monk, every time he met him, he would always talk to him about miracles. And surely, as he went once again to find him, the first thing he started again talking about is God, and of course about the beautiful miracles that he has seen in Jerusalem. While he was telling him a miracle, and this is so amazing, the ascetic monk 
says to Nicholas, wow, what an amazing surgery. The baby was crying from the pain. Now, at that moment when Nicholas heard that, he asked the elder, what surgery and what baby? And the ascetic monk answered this, your nephew, angels operated on him and gave him two perfectly fine kidneys. I'm saying this and I've actually, I've got, I've actually got shivers. When Nicholas heard this, he actually thought that the monk had gone crazy and that all the previous miracles that he had spoken, spoken to him about were all from his imagination. So Nicholas got up to leave and as he got up, the monk tapped him on the back and said to him, stay well and you will also have a daughter. Nicholas goes on to say that he left and he left very sad because he assumed that the elder had lost his mind in the wilderness and because he was probably so lonely there. Now listen to this. I'll read his words. He says, I got back in my car to drive to the embassy. When my mobile phone rang, it was my wife. She was talking to me and crying and I could not understand much of what she was trying to say, but I managed to understand the words. Nicholas, the baby is fine. I tried to calm her down so I could understand what she was saying. She told me exactly the same words that the ascetic monk had said that the baby had two perfectly fine kidneys. That's what they found at the hospital back in Cyprus. He says that he was in shock. He stopped his car, he did a U-turn and went back to the ascetic monk. His mind was confused and his thoughts were here and there. And for the first time he goes, when he got to the monk, he knelt before him, he kissed his hands and he whispered to the monk, you are holy. And the monk said to him, my child, don't ever say that again. Holy is only our God. So Nicholas now goes on to say that a week after, he gets a phone call from his wife. And the moment he answered the phone, his wife said to him, Nicholas, my love, the words of the elder straight away resonated in his heart. And he said, you don't have to say anything else. You are pregnant. And she said, yes, how did you know? And Nicholas said to his wife, the elder told me, my friend, and it is a little girl. So after this miracle that happened with his um, sister-in-law, Nicholas goes on to say that his faith in God became much deeper and that no one and for nothing, his faith will ever be shaken. So just to say here that we do not expect miracles in order to believe because faith in God, just the fact that we have repentance through our Lord Jesus Christ and hopefully through his mercy, a place in his kingdom, only that alone, we should have the strongest faith. But many miracles have helped people come back to, let's say, to their right path. Even I have my miracle. If you look below, I'll put the link in the description. I have a video called My Personal Miracle. And that is what got me thinking to get back on the righteous path of the Lord. So miracles serve a purpose. And that is why they are there as well. Another thing I want to say is that, as we can see, doctors, they have what I call book knowledge. And book knowledge gets you a certain point. But then, what I call it is, then you have divine knowledge, which is where doctors stop. That is where, you know, God can, is just starting. God can do anything. 
And that is why we should not put out 100% trust in science and doctors. Yes, doctors are good. Yes, science are good. We even have holy saints that were doctors. But we should always put our full trust only in God. And my brothers and sisters, all this will come to an end. I stand here in the beautiful temple of God as an unworthy sinner and I tell you, have faith. All this we are seeing will come to an end in God's timing, of course. Our Lord will intervene. Please have faith and please have trust. There is nothing that our Lord cannot do if we give ourselves over to him 100%. So let's all do that. Amen.